بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. إن شاء الله continuing with our series on the life of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم السيرة النبوية the prophetic biography. In the previous uh, few sessions, we've been talking about the Prophet Sallallahu arrival uh, within the city of Yathrib, which was of course now known as Medina al-Nabi or Al-Medina al-Nabawiya, the prophetic city or the Prophet Sallallahu city. Al-Medina al-Munawwara, the illuminated city of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we've talked about over the last couple of sessions, we've talked about some of you know, the firsts in Medina. The Prophet ﷺ arrives, of course he settles in, he constructs a masjid, he finally brings in his family and settles his own family. And then we talked about a couple of the first, the first uh, you know, birth that occurred in this new you know, community, Muslim community in Medina, and how it was a huge you know, uh, cause and source of celebration within the Muslim community in Medina, this fledgling community. We also talked about the first janaza, the first death within that community, and how the whole community mourned and grieved together over the loss of their brother. And we also talked a little bit about the, out, the layout of the city of Medina. What we're gonna start talking about in the following weeks is some of the um, political, you know, if you will, strategy, and even some of the military, the beginning of some of the military expeditions that started to occur within the city of Medina as well. We also talked about the establishment of prayer. The adhan was, you know, sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a divine form, a divine method of inviting people to the prayer. So now this community is settling down, and the Prophet ﷺ did something very strategic that we've already talked about in the past, and that was the Prophet ﷺ formed the bonds of brotherhood between the Muhajirun and the Ansar. Not only did he settle the pre-existing uh, issues that were there amongst the Ansar, the Arabs of Medina, the Aus and the Khazraj, they had been fighting for many generations. Not only did he settle those matters and issues between them, but the Prophet ﷺ also established the bonds of brotherhood between Muhajirun, the people who came from Mecca, and the Ansar, the people who were residents of Medina. And he joined one and one together as brothers, and similarly on the sister's side as sisters, to help, this become, to help it become one integrated community. Not to erase the identity uh, of the people, but nevertheless for that to be a secondary thing, if anything. But primarily, their primary identity to be the fact that they are Muslims, and they are all participants and, and uh, members of this community, this unified, joined community. One of the other interesting things that I talked about previously was that the Prophet ﷺ reached out to the non-Muslim Arabs of Medina, such as Abdullah bin Ubay bin Sulul, and some of the Munafiqun, some of the non-Muslims. Similarly, the Prophet ﷺ reached out to the Jewish tribes that lived in and outside of Medina, and helping to establish good relationships with them. After the Prophet ﷺ had established all of this, he had settled all of this, and he had set down these foundations, the Prophet ﷺ took a major Major step, And this is a landmark event of the seerah where the Prophet ﷺ basically drafted a constitution for the city of Medina. The Prophet ﷺ basically put down certain guidelines, certain rules, and how this community would operate. And so the Prophet ﷺ dictated, right, the narration is mentioned in Ibn Ishaq, and of course in Ibn Hisham, also mentions this narration, as do other scholars of the seerah, like Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah ta'ala. And they say, وَكَتَبَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم كِتَابًا The Prophet ﷺ wrote down a book, which is basically an expression in Arabic saying, the Prophet ﷺ drafted this contract, this constitution, this document. When it says that, of course, while literally it seems like the Prophet ﷺ wrote it, but we know the Prophet ﷺ, Allah says in the Qur'an, وَمَا تَخُطُّهُ بِيَمِينِكَ إِذَا لَرْتَابُ الْمُبْطِلُونَ That you do not write with your hand, meaning the Prophet ﷺ was ummi, he was unlettered, he did not write. Alright, so when it says that the Prophet ﷺ wrote this down, it means he dictated it. So the Prophet ﷺ sat down with some of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum. Amongst them obviously must have been some of the scribes of divine revelation, though people that the Prophet ﷺ used to trust to dictate things to them. And he dictated the following things. And the Prophet ﷺ said, um, 
كتب كتابا بين المهاجرين والانصار he wrote this down uh, first as a as a constitution between the muhajirin and the ansar and then wada'a fihi al-yahud wa 'ahadahum wa aqarrahum 'ala dinihim wa amwalihim and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also uh, stipulated certain points in regards to the other faith based community that was present in Medina which was the Jewish community and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know basically went into a pact and a truce ahadahum muahada he went into a pact and a truce with them and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that you will get to maintain your religion and your property if you so choose meaning we will not usurp your religion from you we will not force you to abandon your religion we will not usurp your property from you but you will maintain your personal property and you will maintain your own personal religion of choice washtarata alayhim wa sharata lahum the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam put certain conditions on them and he also stipulated certain conditions for them so he said we will behave conduct ourselves with you in the following manner and similarly the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that you will be mandated to conduct yourself by the following points and stipulations as well and the letter goes as follows bismillahir rahmanir rahim so i'm basically going to read through this and translate it and analyze any points that require analyzing um it's not too lengthy but it's not very short either so i'll be asking for your patience but it will be very fascinating as you hear each and every single point the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says bismillahir rahmanir rahim uh be- i begin with the name of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the abundantly merciful and the constantly merciful hada kitabun min muhammadin an nabi that this is a contract this is a constitution from muhammad who is the prophet of allah bain al mu'minin wal muslimin from between the believers and the muslims min quraish wa yathrib whether they be from quraish from makka or they be from madina yathrib wa man tabi'ahum and whoever chooses to follow them falahiqa bihim wa jahada ma'ahum and that person joins up with them and that person basically fights alongside of them innahum ummatun wahidatun min dun an-nas they are one unified people amongst all the other people al muhajirun min quraish ala rib'atihim the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the quraish the muhajirun from the quraish will maintain their own personal property their own personal relationships they will maintain whatever they were doing before uh, they came here to medina yata'aqaluna bainahum they will settle their debts amongst one another they will settle their debts amongst one another wa hum yafduna aniyahum bil ma'ruf wal qist and they will take care of their debts and their obligations social or personal obligations in a fair in a just manner they will take care of their personal responsibility this is a very important point because we know that the ansar are called the ansar because they had hospitality they embraced and welcomed the muslims of makka with open arms and open hearts having said that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is also at the same time stipulating the fact that the muhajirun are not here to become a burden upon anyone else they're not here to become a burden upon anyone else but they will take care of their own personal responsibilities the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam preached personal responsibility responsibility is a very important precept of our deen and our religion wa banu auf ala riba'atihim and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned banu auf because banu auf was one of the main families one of the main uh sub tribes or families within the city of medina from amongst the ansar and they were also the neighborhood in which the masjid was located so they were the ones that were at the center of medina and they were also one of the major ones he said so banu auf will take care of their own personal responsibilities yata'aqaluna ma'aqilahum al ula they will first and foremost most take care of their own personal obligations debts and responsibilities before anything else they want to help the muhajirun they're more than welcome to but after they take care of themselves right so the prophet says something again here is preaching personal responsibility you know this is a very subtle thing uh, i was talking about this with the students at the seminary this is a very subtle manner in which the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would preach so we know that there is the teaching of ithar ithar is to give preference to somebody else over yourself the quran says yuthiruna ala anfusihim walaw kana bihim khasasatun that they give preference to others over themselves even though they themselves are in dire and desperate need themselves so on one side the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam preaches look out for your brother 
Look out for your brother and sacrifice yourself if you have to to help out your brother. But on the other hand, how do you prevent somebody not taking advantage of this? Right? Because if the Prophet is preaching ithar, 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 give preference, give preference, give preference to the Ansar, what prevents some outsiders coming in and taking advantage of them? Because these people got bleeding hearts. When somebody else shows up from outside, they empty their pockets and put it on the table. Ahlan wa sahlan. Marhaban bikum. Anta akhi fillah. You are my brother for the sake of Allah. Fil Islam. And then they, how do, how do you prevent them from being taken advantage of? This is how the Prophet ﷺ would do it. This is wisdom, this is tarbiyah. Where the Prophet ﷺ on one side tells the Ansar, help your brother. But on the other hand, the Prophet ﷺ does what? He tells the Muhajirun, take responsibility. They have their own responsibilities. You have your own responsibilities. You gotta get up in the morning. You gotta roll up your sleeves. You gotta go out there and you gotta work. You take care of yourself. You again just sit here and just freeload off of them. So you see the balance that the Prophet ﷺ creates here. This is, this is how to build a community. These are community ethics. And this is how you do the tarbiyah of a people. So he says, وَكُلُّ طَائِفَةٌ, وكل طائفة تَفْدِي عَانِيَهَا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَالْقِسْطِ بَيْنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And then the Prophet ﷺ said, every single group will take care of their own responsibilities with fairness and justice and equality and in a good manner. And then the narration says, ثُمَّ ذَكَرَ كُلَّ بَطْنٍ مِّن بُطُونِ الْأَنصَارِ Remember he had mentioned Banu Auf? He said, وَبَنُوا عَوْفَ عَلَىٰ رِبَعَتِهِمْ Then the Prophet ﷺ mentioned all the different major khandans, the different families of the Ansar. He mentioned each one by name. وَأَهْلَ كُلِّ دَار He mentioned every one of the neighborhoods. Of Medina by name. He said, وَبَنُوا سَاعِدَ عَلَىٰ رِبَعَتِهِمْ وَبَنُوا جُشَمْ عَلَىٰ رِبَعَتِهِمْ وَبَنُوا النَّجَّارَ عَلَىٰ رِبَعَتِهِمْ وَبَنُوا عَمْرِ بِنْ عَوْفْ عَلَىٰ رِبَعَتِهِمْ وَبَنُوا النَّبِيتْ عَلَىٰ رِبَعَتِهِمْ إِلَىٰ أَنْ قَالْ Until he had mentioned each of the families and the neighborhoods of the Ansar. That, so to make sure everyone understood that take responsibility for yourselves. Then the Prophet ﷺ, after he mentioned everyone, then he said, وَإِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ لَا يَتْرُكُونَ مُفْرَحًا بَيْنَهُمْ أَنْ يُعْطُوهُ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ فِي فِدَاءٍ وَعَقْلٍ That he said, but at the same time, look, he said, everyone take responsibility for yourselves. But then he says, and most definitely for the believers, this is an obligation. They will not leave any individual mufrahan. Mufrah in the Arabic language basically means somebody who is in extreme debt, extreme debt, or somebody who has so many obligations, right? Maybe it's somebody in a very difficult situation. You know, they're married, they got, you know, especially back in those days, five, six, seven kids. And then his parents are elderly, and then he's got a disabled sibling that he has to look after, and then he's got a widowed sister that he's looking after, right, etc., etc. So let's just say somebody's in this type of a situation, where one person has like 12 dependents. So the, this is a person that you call mufrah, right? So the Prophet ﷺ said the believers will not leave anyone in this type of a dire, desperate situation, Except that they will basically give that person something that helps to alleviate the circumstances and the direness of that person's situation. وَلَا يُحَالِفُ مُؤْمِنٌ مَوْلَى مُؤْمِنٍ دُونَهُ And then the Prophet ﷺ said that one person will not go and enter into an agreement with someone who had already had an agreement with somebody else. Alright, so I have an agreement with brother, with brother Haris, me and him have an agreement. So then brother Bilal comes in and tries to undercut me by going into a better, offering a sweeter deal to brother Haris. لا يجوز, لا يحالف. The Prophet ﷺ said, nobody will do this. This is, how, this is how problems in a community arise. Don't even open this door. It's a slippery slope. وَإِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الْمُتَّقِينَ عَلَى مَنْ بَغَى مِنْهُمْ and the Prophet ﷺ said that believers will all protect one another from people who will try to do something wrong or something bad to them. That somebody from amongst the community who tries to do something evil, the believers will protect one another. O ibtaga dasisata dhulmin. And then the Prophet ﷺ similarly said that anybody who tries to um, 
Anyone who tries to basically uh, scam another believer, the believers will not support him, and the believers will stand up against that person. Oh, ithmin, oh, udwan, or somebody who targets somebody with ill intent, or somebody who tries to pin animosity towards someone, tries to make an enemy out of someone, that the believers will stand against this. Oh, fasadim bain al mu'minin, or somebody who tries to create chaos and corruption within the community. Wa inna aidiyahum alayhim, alayhi jami'ihim, walau kana walada ahadihim. And the Prophet ﷺ used an expression that everybody will lay, will basically raise arms against that person, meaning everyone will take action against that person, even if it be one of their own sons. That even if one of your own sons is the person who's causing problems in the community, you will join the community in opposing that person. And you will not tolerate this type of behavior. وَلَا يَقْتُلُ مُؤْمِنٌ مُؤْمِنًا فِي كَافِرٍ وَلَا يُنصَرُ كَافِرٌ عَلَى مُؤْمِنٍ Alright, now the next two points I'm gonna translate them, but then I'm gonna explain them to you. Because it requires some explanation. The Prophet ﷺ said that a believer will not kill another believer in regards to a disbeliever. A believer will not kill another believer because of a disbeliever. And then he says, وَلَا يُنصَرُ كَافِرٌ عَلَى مُؤْمِنٍ That a disbeliever will not be helped against a believer. Now what's he talking about here, right? Because at the same time, was the constitution of the Prophet ﷺ eventually updated? What was the major update to the constitution, the revision to the constitution of the Prophet ﷺ? Does anyone know what it's called? What's it called? Anybody? Very famous Islamic history. What? No? Anybody know? Khutbah to Hajjat al The khutbah of Hajjat al The farewell pilgrimage sermon of the Prophet ﷺ. Khutbah to Hajjat al that was a major update. And in that major update, the Prophet ﷺ said what? The Prophet ﷺ said, that always helped the mazloom. Always help the mazloom. Right? Even if it be against a Muslim. Right? Always help the mazloom, even if it requires taking action against a Muslim, holding a Muslim accountable. So, even though this is not contradictory, because I'll explain... But this seems on the surface to somebody with a very rough translation, it could seem a little contradictory. Right? And even when you hear that, never help a kafir against a Muslim. Well, what about if the kafir is right and the Muslim is wrong? I thought we were supposed to always be on the side of the truth. Well, what does this mean? So this, a couple of things. Number one, you have to understand, this is why rough translations don't do justice. A lot of times. The Prophet ﷺ is saying, وَلَا يَقْتُلُ مُؤْمِنٌ مُؤْمِنًا فِي كَافِرٍ A believer will not kill another believer because of a disbeliever. It's not necessarily saying that due to justice. It's just saying that you become allies with a disbeliever and then you end up killing another believer. You turn on your own community. So don't basically become a rebel within the community is what it means, number one. The second thing the Prophet ﷺ is saying, a believer will not kill another believer. No vigilante justice. The Prophet ﷺ put an end to vigilante justice. Everyone understand vigilante justice? If somebody ends up killing somebody else, what is my responsibility as a citizen? What am I supposed to do? If I, if I see one person kill, murder another person, what am I as a citizen supposed to do? No, that's what I'm not supposed to do, right? What I'm supposed to do is call 911. Vigilante justice would be if I went and just killed the other person, right? There's no vigilante justice. I don't pull out my, you know, this is Texas, right? So I don't pull out my own concealed hand weapon. I don't have one, just as an example, right? I, I, I don't pull out my own concealed handgun or hand weapon and then attack a person or kill a person. La yaju is haram. That's not permissible in Islam. And it's not legal in this country either. And it's not permissible in Islam either. But rather, what I'm supposed to do is 911. I'm supposed to call the authorities and inform the authorities about what information I have. This person was such and such and such. And this person did this, and I'm a witness to this fact. That's it. That's my obligation as a citizen. 
All right? That's what the Prophet is saying. That one believer will not kill another believer. Number one, he's putting an end to vigilante justice. Because before Islam, in tribal law, what was the system? The system was vigilanteism. Yeah, you just took action. You walked up to somebody and you just killed them. If you had a grievance, you just walked up to somebody and killed them. So the Prophet is saying, no, this is haram, la yajuz, it's not allowed. This is, it goes against the divine law. No more vigilanteism. Number two, the Prophet ﷺ is not so much talking about supporting good or supporting an oppressor or things like that. The Prophet ﷺ is basically saying, don't turn on your own community. Secondly, the Prophet ﷺ says that a disbeliever, a kafir, should not be helped against a believer. See, the language is very specific. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا ينصر كافرون على مسلم وعلى للاستعلاء the word ala in the Arabic language means to dominate someone or something. And it's basically used when you are oppressing someone or taking away somebody's rights. When you are doing dhulm towards someone. So the Prophet ﷺ is basically saying that if a kafir is doing wrong to a Muslim, then don't help that kafir. Don't help that disbeliever. Secondly, even if we took it at face value, that the Prophet ﷺ is saying, you know, don't, don't, don't kill another Muslim because of a non-Muslim, and don't help a non-Muslim against a Muslim, at the same time you have to understand, at Hajjatul Wida, when the Prophet ﷺ said, always be on the side of justice, because that was the farewell address of the Prophet ﷺ. He basically was leaving these as instructions as he was getting ready to leave the world. So he was giving instructions that would be, that would be beneficial to the ummah after he was gone. The Prophet ﷺ is giving these instructions when he arrived in Medina. Meaning he's there amongst them. So he's personally taking responsibility that I will clarify justice and not justice and I will take care of that issue to begin with. After having established justice, if a Muslim is doing wrong, I will already hold him accountable. So now that justice has been established, now here are the ethics. Because he's still amongst them. Alright? Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet ﷺ, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ Allah will not destroy them, Allah will not punish them while you are amongst them. Why? Because what are you doing? You are maintaining justice. You are maintaining justice and you are correcting them along the way. So that's the context of this particular instruction. The Prophet ﷺ then goes on to say, وَإِنَّ ذِمَّةَ اللَّهِ وَاحِدَةٌ That the charge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. يُجِيرُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَدْنَاهُمْ That basically all of the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking care of, they are all one. They are all entrusted to the care of Allah. يُجِيرُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَدْنَاهُمْ The lowest and the most insignificant member of the community Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects that person. وَإِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ بَعْضُهُمْ مَوَالِي بَعْضِ بَعْضٍ دُونَ النَّاسِ And the, he said the believers are supporters of one another, aside from other people. وَإِنَّهُ مَنْ تَبِعَنَا مِنْ يَهُودٍ And then the Prophet ﷺ, now he's talking here about new people joining the community. He said if any of these, uh, of these you know, Jewish community members, if they end up accepting Islam and joining the Muslim community, how do we treat them? The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is very important to pay attention to, because we deal with this dynamic all the time. Right? And he's mentioning specifically the Yahud and not the Arab, because there's a very profound point here. If one of the Arab of Medina or one of the Arab of, the, of Mecca accept Islam, then they are, they're already from amongst them, right? He's his cousin and his second cousin and his uncle and his nephew and she's his sister and uh, her aunt and her cousin, etc., etc. Right? So their relationship's already there. That's like one of your people just joining you. But what about when somebody is from a different ethnicity, a different race, a completely different community? We deal with that a lot. Right? There might be a predominantly, you know, uh, it might be one community that is predominantly belonging to one ethnicity, or one race, or one culture. And then you have somebody else join that community. How do you treat them? The Prophet ﷺ said, فَإِنَّ لَهُ النُّصْرَ وَالْأُسْوَةِ An nusra means help. That that person is fully deserving of our help and assistance. As you would help your own blood relative if they joined the Muslim community. وَالْأُسْوَةِ Uswa means musawat. Equality. That person is an equal member of this community. No different than anybody else in this community. 
غَيْرَ مَظْلُومِينَ وَلَا مُتَنَاصَرِينَ عَلَيْهِمْ And the Prophet ﷺ said that person will not be wronged and that person will not be opposed. وَإِنَّ سِلْمَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَاحِدَةٌ The Prophet ﷺ said the safety and the protection of the Muslims is one unified trust. لَا يُسَالِمُ مُؤْمِنٌ دُونَ مُؤْمِنٍ فِي قِتَالٍ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ That a Muslim will not... You know, basically take sides with anyone else but a Muslim when fighting in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِلَّا عَلَى سَوَاءٍ وَعَدِلٍ بَيْنَهُمْ Except that they will make sure that there will be justice and fairness and equality between them. وَإِنَّ كُلَّ غَازِيَةٍ غَزَتْ مَعَنَا يُعْقِبُ بَعْضُهَا بَعْضًا And the Prophet ﷺ said that whenever anyone goes out, in the path of Allah, from amongst us, whenever any one of us goes out in a ghazwa, in a military expedition or campaign, some of us will look after that person's family, home, property, in the absence of that person. We will look out for one another. We will have each other's backs. وَإِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يُبِيءُ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ بِمَا نَالَ دِمَاءَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And the Prophet ﷺ said that, um, and the believers, they will share with one another what they basically are able to, what they are able to gain from their blood in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning when they go out there willing to sacrifice their lives and they bring back the spoils of war, that is something that will be shared with the community. وَإِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الْمُتَّقِينَ عَلَىٰ أَحْسَنِ هُدًا وَأَقْوَمِهِ And the Prophet ﷺ said that the believers, they guard and protect one another um, in the best guidance and in the best in most just manner possible. وَإِنَّهُ لَا يُجِيرُ مُشْرِكٌ مَالًا لِقُرَيْشٍ وَلَا نَفْسًا And the Prophet ﷺ said, because right now, again, let me translate, that a believer, uh, a mushrik, will not protect any money for another person of Quraysh or for anyone at all. وَلَا يَحُولُ دُونَهُ عَلَى مُؤْمِنٍ And he will never basically help a, a believer. So the Prophet ﷺ is now basically saying that this quality of not being trustworthy and not, not, not looking after and being trustworthy in regards to other people's property, this is a quality of shirk in jahiliyyah. And we are not going to act this way. وَإِنَّهُ مَنِ اخْتَبَطَ مُؤْمِنًا قَتَلًا عَنْ بَيِّنَةٍ فَإِنَّهُ قَوَدٌ بِهِ إِلَّا أَنْ يَرْضَى وَلِيُّ الْمَقْتُولِ The Prophet ﷺ said that if anyone ends up killing another person, Right? If somebody ends up killing another person, and this is proven, an bayinatin, this is clearly proven, then that person will be, his life will be offered up in retribution unless the family of the deceased chooses to forgive him. Right? That if you kill a person, you will die in retribution. Unless the family forgives. وَإِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ عَلَيْهِ كَافَّةً And the believers will take care of this issue. The believers, the community of the believers, will handle this issue. وَلَا يَحِلُّ لَهُمْ إِلَّا قِيَامٌ عَلَيْهِ And the whole community has to stand unified when this type of injustice takes place. وَإِنَّهُ لَا يَحِلُّ لِمُؤْمِنٍ أَقَرَّ بِمَا فِي هَذِهِ الصَّحِيفَةِ And it is not permissible for any believer to violate any... It is not permissible for any believer who attests to the truth of this constitution, وَآمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ And a believer who believes in Allah in the last day, the day of judgment, أَنْ يَنْصُرَ مُحْدِيثًا وَلَا يُؤْوِيَهُ That if somebody ends up committing a crime in our community, that that person will not aid and abet a criminal. Right? Like we say, aiding and abetting a criminal. This is, a nasr is aiding, and abetting is iwa. يُؤْوِيهِ وَلَا يُؤْوِيهِ He will not aid nor he will abet a criminal. وَإِنَّهُ مَنْ نَصَرَهُ أَوْ آوَاهُ And if somebody does aid in a better criminal, فَإِنَّ عَلَيْهِ لَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ وَغَضَبَهُ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Then the curse of Allah and the anger and the wrath of Allah will be upon this person on the day of resurrection. وَلَا يُؤْخَذُ مِنْهُ صَرْفٌ وَلَا عَدْلٌ No amount of bribery or money will be accepted from that person. That person cannot bribe their way, cannot swindle their way or deal their way out of this 
issue. وَإِنَّكُمْ مَهْمَا اِخْتَلَفْتُمْ فِيهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَإِنَّ مَرَدَّهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَإِلَى مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ And then the Prophet وسلم said, If any one of you ever disagree in any of these following issues, you will take those matters to Allah and to the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Basically the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Now he turns his attention to the Yahud. He says, وَإِنَّ الْيَهُودَ يُنْفِقُونَ But another narration, another nusakh, uh, another nuskha, another variation, it basically says, يَتَّفِقُونَ مَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ مَا دَارُوا مُحَارِبِينَ مَا دَامُوا مُحَارِبِينَ The Prophet ﷺ said, as long as the Yahud are willing to stand by the side of the Muslims and fight, like defend, the safety of the Muslims, like the Muslims are willing to defend their safety, as long as they are willing to defend the safety of the Muslims, then the Yahud will be with the believers. They will be with the believers. The Jewish community will be with the Muslim community. When Yahud bani Auf ummatun ma'al mu'minin. When Yahud bani Auf ummatun ma'al mu'minin. And the Jewish people that live in the area of Banu Auf, the neighborhood of Banu Auf, they are from the community of the Muslims. Meaning, we will give them the same rights that we afford to a Muslim neighbor. We will treat them fairly. Lil Yahudi dinuhum wa lil Muslimin dinuhum. The Jewish people are free to practice their religion and the Muslims are free to practice their religion. Mawalihim wa anfusihim. And not only are they free to practice their religion, but their slaves, their allies, their families, everybody is free to practice their own religion. Illa man zalama wa athima. Except for anyone who does wrong or commits a crime, that person will be held accountable. Wa innahu la yutihu illa nafsahu wa ahli baytihi. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever commits a crime, that person has harmed himself. Like if, you know, and you know how parents talk to their children, right? When the child does something bad and the parent punishes the child, right? You don't get to play video games or you're grounded or you don't get to do this or you don't get to do that or whatever. And the kid, you know, cries and complains and screams and shouts and all this kind of stuff. And then what does the parent say? I didn't do this to you. You did this to yourself. Because I told you not to do that and you still did it. So you did this to yourself. Same way the Prophet ﷺ is very basic tarbiyah. He's saying that look, if you commit a crime, we will hold you accountable. And then if you shout and you scream and you cry, look Muhammad, look what Muhammad does. No, no, no. Muhammad didn't do anything to you. You did this to yourself. You did this to yourself. Then he says, وَإِنَّ لَا يَهُودَ بَنِ النَّجَارِ وَبَنِ الْحَارِثِ وَبَنِ سَاعِدَ وَبَنِ جُشَمْ وَبَنِ الْأَوْسِ وَبَنِ ثَعْلَبَ وَجَفْنَ وَبَنِ الشُّطْبَ مِثْلَ مَا الْيَهُودِ بَنِ عَوْفِ And he said the same thing to all the Jewish people that might live in all the other neighborhoods of Medina. وَإِنَّ بِطَانَةَ يَهُودْ كَأَنفُسِهِمْ The Prophet ﷺ said that the Yahud, the leadership of the Yahud will be from amongst them. The leadership of the Yahud will be from amongst them. وَإِنَّهُ لَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهُمْ أَحَدٌ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ مُحَمَّدٍ And nobody will leave the leadership except they have, after they have consulted the Prophet ﷺ. So this kind of talks about now different communities, how they, should they interact with one another. When different communities share a space, a neighborhood, a city, whatever it may be, the other communities should be kept up to date, should be abreast, should be informed about what is going on in each of the communities, like major things that are going on in each community. <clears throat> so if there is a shift of leadership in the Jewish community, that needs to be communicated to the Prophet ﷺ. Right? Because that could end up impacting and affecting the other community as well. And so again, we learn some inter-community ethics. وَلَا يَنْحَجِزُ إِلَّا وَلَا يَنْحَجِزُ عَلَى ثَأْرِ جُرْحٍ And the Prophet ﷺ similarly says that nobody will go and personally seek retribution for a wrong that was done to them. Not even in the Jewish community. Because we all share one space. We, we, we're not gonna have vigilantism. Right? Now everyone's not gonna police the streets on their own. We have an authority, a central authority, and law enforcement. Same way in the Jewish community, we cannot have vigilantism. Things will go crazy. So we need peace. We need to keep the peace. And then the Prophet ﷺ said that anyone who ends up killing somebody else, that person 
has now exchanged that person's crime with his own life. If somebody goes and kills somebody else, they have basically agreed to give up their own life. Because now they will be killed in retribution as a punishment. Alright? إِلَّا مَنْ ظُلِمْ Except for somebody who was done wrong. Like unless there is some oppression or something bad going on, then we will elaborate, we will figure out, we will investigate the situation. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ أَبَرِّ هَذَا And then he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are all basically accountable to Allah in regards to this. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over us in regards to this agreement. وَإِنَّ عَلَىٰ الْيَهُودِ نَفَقَتَهُمْ وَعَلَىٰ الْمُسْلِمِينَ نَفَقَتَهُمْ the Jewish community will take care of their own, you know, economics and financial issues. And the Muslims will take care of their own economics. وَإِنَّ بَيْنَهُمْ النَّصْرَ عَلَىٰ مَنْ حَارَبَ أَهْلِ هَذِي الصَّحِيفَةِ And then the Prophet ﷺ said, However, between them there is an agreement that they will help one another. If anyone who has agreed to this, this uh, constitution, if anyone who has agreed to this constitution is attacked, Everybody else will stand up in defense of that person. وَإِنَّ بَيْنَهُمَ النُّصْحَ وَالنَّصِيحَ And the Prophet ﷺ says that between them is good advice and counsel to one another. Everybody will look out for the good of one another. We will advise one another. We will counsel one another. وَالْبِرَّ دُونَ الْإِثْمِ We will always counsel towards good, but we will not counsel each other in doing evil. Meaning, I am here to help you. The Muslim community is saying to the Jewish community, we are here to help you in good things, but not in bad or evil things. وَإِنَّهُ لَمْ يَأْثِمْ إِمْرَأٌ بِحَلِيفِهِ Nobody should basically do wrong to anyone else that they have an agreement with. وَإِنَّ نَصْرَ لِلْمَظْلُومِ And we agree to help those who are wronged within the community. See, this is where you see the mazloom. Right? You always are on the side of justice. Help the oppressed. Help the oppressed. وَإِنَّ يَثْرِبَ حَرَامٌ جَوْفُهَا لِأَهْلِ هَذِي الصَّحِفَةِ And this city is now sacred for everyone who has agreed to this document and this constitution. وَإِنَّ الْجَارَ كَالنَّفْسِ You will treat your neighbor like your own, you will treat, you will value the life and the property of your neighbor like you value your own life and your own property. غَيْرَ مُضَارٍ وَلَا آثِمٍ You will never do wrong to your neighbor. وَإِنَّهُ لَا تُجَارُ حُرْمَةٌ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ أَهْلِيَا and you will not violate the sanctity of anyone unless and until they give you permission to do so. Meaning you will respect, you will respect privacy and property. وَإِنَّهُ مَا كَانَ بَيْنَ أَهْلِ هَذِي الصَّحِيفَةِ مِنْ حَدَثٍ أَوْ إِشْتِجَارٍ يُخَافُ فَسَادُهُ فَإِنَّ مَرَدَّهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَإِلَى مُحَمَّدٍ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ And that anyone who has agreed to this particular treaty, this constitution, then if anything comes up, like disagreements or quarrels or uh, grievances, then that will be returned to Allah and His Messenger وسلم, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ أَتْقَى مَا فِي هَذِي الصَّحِيفَةِ وَأَبَرِّهِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more just and more fair than even this constitution and this agreement. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not do you wrong. وَإِنَّهُ لَا تُجَادُ قُرَيْشٌ وَلَا مَنْ نَصَرَهَا Now this is the part I need to explain. You will not grant protection to the Quraysh, nor to the allies of the Quraysh. Why? Because you have to understand the circumstances. They are currently in an open war with the Quraysh. This, this constitution is drafted during times of war. So you will not help the Quraysh nor the allies of the Quraysh. وَإِنَّ بَيْنَهُمَ النُّصْرَ عَلَىٰ مَنْ دَهَمَ يَثْرِبْ But rather anyone who raids the city of Medina, Yathrib, you will stand up against that person. وَإِذَا دَعَوْا إِلَىٰ سُلْحٍ يُصَالِحُونَهُ وَيَلْبَسُونَهُ But if somebody comes to Yathrib, to Medina, wanting to enter into a pact and an agreement with you, then the people of this constitution, the people of Medina, will sit down and enter into a peaceful treaty with those people. فَإِنَّهُمْ يُصَالِحُونَهُ وَإِنَّهُمْ إِذَا دُعُوا إِلَىٰ مِثْلِ ذَلِكَ فَإِنَّهُ لَهُمْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِلَّا مَنْ حَارَبَ فِي الدِّينَ Unless and until somebody of course is trying to attack the religion of Islam, outside of that, anytime somebody wants to come here and have a treaty, enter into a peaceful agreement, we will welcome that. عَلَىٰ كُلِّ أُنَاسٍ حِصَّتَهُمْ مِنْ جَانِبِهِمْ الَّذِي قِبِلَهُمْ Everyone will maintain their personal properties. Everyone will maintain their personal properties, Muslims and Jews. وَإِنَّهُ لَا يَحُولُ هَذَا الْكِتَابُ دُونَ ظَالِمٍ وَآثِمٍ Right? And nobody 
this, this, this agreement and constitution envelops everyone in this community except for somebody who has done wrong or somebody who is violating the rights of another. That person will be held accountable. وَإِنَّهُ مَنْ خَرَجَ آمِنٌ وَمَنْ قَاعَدَ آمِنٌ بِالْمَدِينَةِ and now the Prophet ﷺ, after using the word yathrib yathrib, now at the end of the constitution, he uses the word Medina. He says, anyone who leaves Medina, leaves peacefully. Anyone who wants to stay in Medina, stays in Medina peacefully. There's no force here. You are free to go, you are free to come, you are free to stay. This is your city. This is your home. إِلَّا مَنْ ظَلَمَ أَوْ أَثِيمَ And of course, unless somebody does something wrong, then that person we will hold accountable. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ جَارٌ لِمَنْ بَرَّ وَاتَّقَى And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant protection to the person who will conduct themselves by this constitution and this agreement in a fair and a just and a God-conscious, God-fearing manner. This is basically the narration that has been mentioned within the books of Sirah. Um, some different different bits and pieces of it are from different narrations, but this is a general constitution that the Prophet ﷺ draft, drafted when he first came to the city of Medina. And of course, pretty much it speaks for itself. These are the words and the guidance, the hadi of Muhammad ﷺ. There's nothing more I could say or I could offer that would be even close to as beneficial as this. But just to facilitate understanding and to kind of summarize, for the simple-minded like myself, that basically the Prophet ﷺ, when you read through this, you see a couple of things, a couple of very important observations. Number one, the Prophet ﷺ puts fairness, justice, equality before everything else. إِلَّا مَنْ ظَلِمَ إِلَّا مَنْ ظَلَمَ أَوْ أَثِمَ إِلَّا مَنْ ظَلَمَ أَوْ أَثِمَ Right, so he puts fairness, justice, equality before anything else. Number two, what that necessitates is the intolerance the intolerance for injustice. The tolerance for people, but the intolerance for injustice. And crimes against other people. Because you ruin the safety and the sanctity of a community. Just like if there is abuse going on in a home, what does that do to the home? That removes the safety, the sanctity of the home. Same way in a community. That will destroy a community. When you tolerate injustice. So the Prophet ﷺ calls out injustice. And number three, you see that the Prophet ﷺ, the type of fair, just, and equitable relationship that the Prophet ﷺ established with non-Muslims who lived within that community. And then fourthly and finally, you see the welcoming and inclusive attitude of the Prophet ﷺ. Anyone who joins, everyone is free to go, everyone is free to come, everyone is free to stay. Medina is for everybody. And that's what our scholars used to explain to us. I remember our, our teachers always explaining this point to us. What we strive to do in every masjid all across the world, in every Muslim community, we try to create mini Masjid Nabawis. Every Muslim community is striving to basically establish a mini Medina. A replica of the city of the Prophet ﷺ. And that's the attitude we need to have. Like Medina was home to everyone. And it was, everyone was welcome. And everyone was embraced. And everyone was given their rights. And everyone was family. That's what we strive to achieve within our communities today as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to practice everything that was said and heard. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahu bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nasaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.